The Young Britain's foundation is key to understanding the personnel involved in things like Tufton Street and this whole attempted takeover, I'd say, of British democracy. The organisation was founded in 2003 and presidents like Daniel Hannan, it was kind of a Eurosceptic, quite hard right, Republican leaning UK organisation inspired by an American organisation, the Young America's Foundation. Um, and, but it came to some scandal because a young activist, Elliot Johnson, committed suicide alleging he'd been bullied by uh, the Young Britain's Foundation. And there was an investigation and all these characters came to light. And out of that, the guy alleged to have bullied him, who was uh, disciplined and thrown out the Tory party, a guy called Mark Clark, had also been involved in the Tory battle bus. This was a young activist shipped all over the UK during the 2015 election. It emerged nearly a lot of those visits were overspends, were illegal under electoral law. And so it came part of that scandal too. You could see young activists, a lot of drinking, a lot of sex, all coming together under this Young Britain's Foundation were being sort of radicalised. It was called a Tory madrasa uh, back in the early days. And they were being radicalised and involved in, um, in election and election scandals. But it's much more important than that, the Young Britain's Foundation. Because if you look at the membership of that, you will see many of the key figures of the Trump Brexit scandal. For example, one of its organizers early days is Matthew Elliott, who turns up as key figure at Tufton Street. Matthew Richardson, he was another president or treasurer, I forget his precise, of the Young Britain's Foundation, goes over to fund and become the treasurer for UKIP. You also have key media figures. Their scholars win their various awards, the Golden Dolphin for being ultrasound. They like the word dolphins because they like to be politically ultrasound, ultra right wing sound. Um, were well, people like Harry Colt, who was at the Guido Fawkes blog, now political correspondent for The Sun. Paul Staines founded the Guido Fawkes blog. Um, Ian Dale uh, was a, a regular member. And people like Raheem Kassan, who went to form Breitbart. He was also a member. You can track various uh, people. And it was clearly, they did media training, clearly a group of people who are very adept at using uh, internet technology. I mean, Paul Staines with another member, Jack Singh, formed Message Space, which was a company which basically does political messaging out of his blog, but he sold it on to other contractors. He did work for the Russian embassy, for example. So they were all digital strategists. They were seeing a new battle. I think they'd seen the Obama campaign in 2008 activate a whole new generation of political uh, activists and, and financial giving, lots, lots of small donors, they decided to use these same techniques for the right. I said it's an offshoot of the Young Americans Foundation. That is funded by Robert Mercer. Robert Mercer is the guy who founded, funded Cambridge Analytica and the Breitbart uh, series of publications. Now, in 2013, the 10th anniversary com uh, conference, of the Young Britain's Foundation. There is a panel with Steve Bannon and Raheem Kassan, who is just recruited to run Breitbart London, and Harry Cole, who will soon go on to work for The Sun. That same weekend, he is helping to set up in Cambridge, where the conference was, Cambridge Analytica. So that's the key moment that you see this digital strategy meet the media, if you like, the news strategy. Because Cambridge Analytica didn't just send you propaganda. It wasn't just sort of psychometric testing. It weaponized news. It weaponized fake news. You weren't, to Cambridge Analytica would never send you an ad, like, here's a political campaign for Obama, hope's good. It would send you a bit of news, often with, from the Breitbart tags. Cambridge Analytica had a sort of symbiotic relationship with Breitbart and other new, new media organizations. And if, if it knew you had a neurotic personality and were scared of, for your kids, it would send you a story largely confected about Muslim rapists. This is an information operation. This is targeting you psychometrically, and it's not creating, it's creating a whole environment, a fake environment, a kind of matrix around what you do. And so really in 2013, it's fascinating, and that's when Bannon is in Cambridge, Cambridge Analytica, Young Britain's Foundation, all these media types, Richardson, or founders of the Brexit movement on both Vote Leave, that's Matthew Elliott, or Levy U, and that's Matt Richardson, are all there. 
and you see both the media strategy begin and it's incidentally at the same time in 2013, we're talking December and November, that's when Putin, through his cook, his very rich uh, cook who runs his own mercenary armor, arm, who runs his own mercenary army, Prozhogin, sets up the Internet Research Agency, a $50 million a year operation, creating all these fake accounts pushed for Brexit and Trump. Part of that hybrid warfare, part of that military style operation to shift the culture. Bannon told, somebody I've got to know well, Chris Wiley, who was there setting up Cambridge Analytica with him as head of research, to get America to turn, you have to turn Britain first. 2013, you can see that strategy, Trump, Brexit, and for some reason, Russia coming together as an operation. Obviously, they only knew there would be a referendum. They didn't know when it was. Trump had been, had his Trump Tower, his meeting with Miss Universe, and spoken to Putin, it seems, to Skype in around 2013 too. Now, those forces together, whether it's a conscious conspiracy, whether it's just an alignment of forces, they do funnel through these moments, or and in Britain's case, what I call Bannon's Brexit, which is a hedge fund billionaire, uh, Robert Mercer, who made his money understanding natural language processing and then Rentec, this hyper-fast trading hedge fund, which could spot trends, suddenly turns all that technology, all that information, all that money into a political operation. Because as what Steve Bannon would say to people like Chris Wiley is, look, Britain is seen as a cultural leader in America. For some reason, Britons are supposed to be more, sound more intelligent. Have an English accent, you get 10 IQ points. If Britain turned to the populist side, if it went down the nationist route, that would be more likely to flip America. And so that's why Banner becomes friends with Nigel Farage. He's now, as I speak, becoming friends with Boris Johnson. This is a concerted strategy from very rich people, through media largely and hybrid warfare, to turn the culture into a quite, you know, an anti-immigrant, a what they call nationism, where the old post-world order, the UN, all those institutions, the World Bank, are destroyed and we go back to a more atavistic kind of every nation fighting for itself on a, some weird ethnic or identity basis.